Okay, uh, good afternoon and welcome to this uh, CSC webinar uh, about uh, changing from using Taito to Pufti. My name is Jussi Tienkovara and I work here at CSC in high performance computing support. Uh, we had uh, basically the same webinar already in the uh, end of November. So if you happen to participate in that or if you have been watching uh, the recording from YouTube, there is not that much differences in this webinar. So this is mainly targeted for those people who are not yet have not used Puhti and are just about to transition from Taito. Uh, if you have any questions in any topics, please use the chat box for posting your questions. Uh, I try to answer some of the questions, maybe already during the presentation, uh, and maybe other questions then at the end of the presentation. But uh, if there is anything that you want to know, don't uh, hesitate to use the chat box for asking that. Uh, also, this webinar uh, is going to be recorded and the recording should be available in YouTube uh, probably uh, within one week. Uh, I could also mention that the slides of this presentation are already available in the event page of this webinar. Uh, so for today's topics, uh, I will be first giving a brief overview about Puhti. Uh, about the hardware, the CPUs we have there, and then how to actually get access to Puhti. We discuss a bit more about the different disk areas in Puhti. That's something that there are some changes uh, related to Taito. And then how you use the module system and you can run jobs in Puhti. If you have been using already Taito before, uh, module system and batch job system, they are, they are quite similar, so there are only minor differences. And finally, we discuss also that if you are developing your own applications or you just uh, need to build application yourself, how to do that in Puhti. Uh, you probably are all aware that the uh, title general availability ended by the end of the last year. You can still access Taito, but the support is uh, very limited. Uh, Taito will be fully decommissioned latest in the end of the, this March. And uh, if there is some hardware failures and so on, it's possible that uh, access to Taito ends uh, already a bit earlier. Uh, maybe worth mentioning uh, related to the uh, storing data and so on is that the HPC archive service will also be shut down uh, during 2020. However, that will be available uh, till the end of this year, so there is no big hurry uh, to move and save your data. Uh, we already had uh, previous webinars on how to move data from Taito to Puhti uh, via Tuala service uh, that we won't be discussing in this webinar and uh, please look to the YouTube recordings of these other webinars if you need, to, if you still have some data in Taito and need to be able to move that to Puhti. Uh, during the presentation, I will also do some demonstrations, uh, show you some of the web pages we have where you can find more information at this point already mentioned that our main documentation portal nowadays uh, docs.csc.fi. Uh, so our new Pufti computing cluster, uh, three different partitions. One of the partitions is only for the Finnish Meteorological Institute. So other customers cannot use that. Uh, in total, uh, there are uh, about 1,000 compute nodes in Puhti. Uh, the main CPU partition, which is available for all users, has uh, 680 CPU nodes, and all of these nodes have uh, 40 CPU cores. So in total, there are a bit less than uh, 28,000 CPU cores 
in this CPU part of Puhti. Uh, the other pa partition available to all users is the GPU part, where we have 80 nodes, and all of these nodes have uh, four NVIDIA Volta GPUs, and in addition, 40 CPU cores of similar Intel processors as in the CPU partition. In total, there is a bit less than five petabytes of uh, work disk area. So that's uh, where we discuss the disk areas a bit more in, uh, in a few minutes, but that's mainly for the uh, data to be stored for a short time during and after the simulations. Here are a bit more details about the CPUs and GPUs we have in Puhti. So the CPUs, they are uh, latest generation Intel Xeon uh, scalable processors. Uh, so there are 20 CPU cores per CPU. So there are two CPUs per each node and they are running at uh, 2.1 gigahertz. Uh, they support uh, wide uh, vector instructions, so-called AVX 512, and in theory, uh, these can provide uh, two times speed up uh, compared to the Haskell Intel CPUs we had in Sisu and in Taito. Uh, for machine learning inference workloads, this processor support also special instruction set that in best cases can speed up the uh, calculation with the bit factor of 10. Uh, uh, GPUs, they are, as I said, they are NVIDIA uh, 300 voltas, and there are 32 gigabytes of memory per GPU, which is two times more than in the, in the previous Pascals in Taito. Uh, the CPU nodes, they have a variety of memory configurations we looked at in a, in a moment. The interconnect between the nodes is infinite band HDR. So uh, between the CPU nodes, the bandwidth is uh, 100 gigabytes per second. And in GPU nodes, it's, uh, it's the full 200 gigabytes uh, per second. And this is uh, quite much larger than was available uh, both in Taito and in Sisu. Uh, about the different uh, memory configurations. So we have a uh, uh, largest part uh, amount of nodes. They have uh, uh, 192 gigabytes of memory per node. We have uh, about 530 of those nodes. Then we have uh, a bit less than 100 nodes with twice that amount of memory. And then for jobs that require a large amount of memory, we have a few nodes with uh, uh, 700, uh, uh, 68 uh, gigabytes of memory and few nodes with 1.5 terabytes. Uh, some of the nodes have also a large local SSD like the disk, uh, 3.2 terabyte. Uh, we'll look a bit later on also how this can be utilized in simulations that, that benefit from this one. And as I said, for the GPU part, uh, there is uh, 32 gigabytes of memory per GPU, so 128 in, in total. And for the CPU part, uh, there is uh, 384 gigabytes in total for the node. And the GPU nodes, they have also uh, this uh, fast local SSD-like NVMe disk. So getting access to Pufti, uh, the main portal for all CSC services nowadays is uh, my.csc.fi. Uh, where the project manager of a CSC project uh, can apply for access. Let's have a brief look onto this portal. So here you can actually see also the main documentation. Uh, 
docs.csc.fi. And if you go here to the accounts, you will also see some instructions how to actually, what you need to do in order to get access to Puhti, how to apply for project, uh, how to get uh, computing resources and so on. So if you go to my.csc.fi, uh, there is this uh, welcome screen and you can just click get started here and I can access either with the uh, Virtu or with Haka login, or if I already have the CSC user account, I can use also that. So from Haka, I can select my organization, which is uh, CSC. I will be prompted for my username and password, and I will be shown the main dashboard. So main dashboard shows uh, information about my default project, which in this case is uh, HPC support. Uh, you can see of the project, who is the project manager, uh, how, mu how much billing units there are, how much is remained, and there is also some statistics about the resource usage uh, for this uh, project. If you go to my projects, you can see that I belong to quite, quite a few different projects here. And if I just uh, click, for example, this project, I can see information related to that one. Under my profile, uh, there is some information I can maintain and edit here. And one thing I can here choose is the default billing project. Uh, in most cases that uh, changes only the project that is shown in the, in the dashboard. So in Pufti, there is no such a thing as a, as a default billing project. On the other hand, if you're still using a title, that will affect that. And also if you're using the Rahti service, uh, default billing project uh, affects that one. Uh, under the my projects, it would be also possible to create a new project. So if I click here, I will be asked about the name of the project, so description, and then whether it's an academic project, as uh, would be the case for most of our university customers or commercial one. And after that, I could proceed uh, and when the project has been created, the project manager could add uh, uh, new users to the projects. Uh, project doesn't get any services automatically. So in order to get any services, for example, access to Puhti, uh, the project manager needs to apply for a service. Here, you can see that uh, in this uh, particular project, there is no Puhti service yet. If I click, uh, click here, I get a bit sort of description what Puhti is, but as I'm not the project manager, I cannot apply for the access. If I would be a project manager, it would be possible to click here, get access to that. Uh, later on, all the members of the project still need to approve the service, the terms of conditions. So they will, they will get an automatic email when the project manager has been applied for the project. Once you have uh, obtained the project and access to Puhti, uh, you access with SSH pretty much in similar fashion uh, as you did with Taito. So open the terminal and SSH, your CSC username and pufti.csc.fi. And if everything goes smoothly,
having a bit demo effect here. Okay, I will be, uh, I'm now logged in here. And you can see some information here. You will also see the links to the documentation and to my.csc.f5. Uh, already mentioned that the uh, storage uh, in Puhti that's organized a bit differently than in Taito. So all users, when they get uh, get the service, they have a home directory, which is the only user-specific directory in Puhti, and it's meant only for a small amount of data. Uh, the default quota is only 10 gigabytes and it, it, it's really not meant for storing any, any large data sets and so it's more of configuration scripts, uh, things like that. Uh, then there is a project specific directory, Proyapu, which is meant uh, for sharing, for example, the application codes that all the members of the project are using. And then we have the Scratch, which is a project specific area for temporary data. So that's uh, very similar to the Workdir in Taito, with the difference that the uh, Workdir in Taito, that was uh, user specific. Important difference here in Puhti is also that the quota uh, you request for scratch that consumes billing units. And there was also automatic cleaning in scratch. So files will be deleted 90 days from last access. Uh, relevant data should be moved to Alas uh, where it can be stored a much longer time. This automatic cleaning uh, at the moment is actually not implemented yet, but uh, will be enabled in, in near future. Uh, by default in this uh, pro, uh, project Apple and Scratch, all files and directories that one creates that they are accessible to all project members. Uh, we understand the automatic cleaning from a point of uh, individual user. It's, uh, it's a bit annoying. It would be nice to keep the data in Scratch but uh, we have a really large amount of users uh, we need to serve. And in past to computers, we have regularly had uh, problems when the disks uh, start to be too full and it starts to slow down the whole system. So we need to sort of make, make sure that uh, the amount of data doesn't increase there too much. Uh, the default quotas, uh, we have one in the system. You can find them in the docs. So if you go back here into disk areas, you can see the sort of same description uh, that I had in the slide. Uh, so in home directory, there is a default quota of 10 gigabytes. In Proyable, that's 50 gigabytes. And in Scratch, the default is, is one terabyte. Uh, number of files is also limited because in the file system there is actually some some limits that how many files the single file system can can handle. If you need more quota uh, in terms of uh, gigabytes or in terms of number of files, it's possible to apply for more. Uh, at the moment, it happens by sending. Uh, email to the service desk. You can find uh, detailed instructions here from increasing quotas, but in near future, it should be uh, possible uh, to apply more quota directly from my.csc.f5. You probably realized already that as the variable uh, and scratch, they are project specific, uh, a user and user can belong to several projects. There might be uh, several different Proyable and Scratch directories that the user have. Uh, there is a tool OK. 
Okay, once again, it seems that I'm having a short delay with my network. Oh, then there is some problem with Pufti. Let's try with the new terminal. Okay, apparently there is some issue with Pufti. Uh, so I guess I can demonstrate just at the moment. Uh, but as you find in the documentation also, uh, there is this uh, command, CSC workspaces, which will list uh, all your scratch and variable directories that one has. Typically they have a form where we have the scratch and then the project name. So typically it's a project underscore some number. Okay, seems to be a bit more responsive now so I can You can see that I have my home directory here with uh, not that much data yet here. So plenty of yet uh, space still remaining. And then I have a, a sort of uh, three different projects here. This is some sort of personal project, at least in terms of the project name. And then I have here two of these with from uh, project underscore number and same also with the scratch and also I'm able to see that the, what's the quota and uh, amount of uh, data there is for the whole project there and you can see that for example for this particular project here it has uh, the quota is increased to eight terabytes from the default uh, one terabyte uh, By default, uh, if I go to uh, scratch, so I can, for example, go to this uh, directory here. Uh, I guess in most cases, uh, all the project members, they want to share data, but might want to create the new directories of their own. So I could just create here my own directory. And if I go there, you can see here that, okay, the whole directory here, it's readable and writable by all the project members. If I create here a new file, and save that, that's also printable and writable for all the project members. If I want to limit the access to that, I can use the standard Unix commands. So I can, for example, uh, from the group, I can remove the write access. So they can only read this one, but they cannot modify. And that's, that's how it goes. Uh, what's a bit annoying if you have uh, lots of projects is that uh, uh, even if you use this CSC workspaces, you can see the project IDs here, but you cannot really see that uh, which project they refer to you, that you have to look from uh, my.csc.fi, 
but in future we we try to modify this tool so that it will, would also list some information for example the actual textual title uh, of the project uh, if you are using pre-installed applications there is a model system uh, which is very similar to the to the title uh, the software available that also quite similar to title at the moment we should have most of the applications that were available in title also available in Puhti. Uh, in docs there is the application where you can see in alphabetical order all the applications we have or also by the by the discipline here so by biosciences by chemistry and so on if you go for example click here Chromax you'll get a bit more information how to use that in in CSC services uh, for the modules uh, with module list we can see that there are some default set of modules loaded for all the users mainly some compilers and libraries which are needed in many cases if I here also want to see what are the different available modules I can use the module avail so lots of information uh, and if I want to use some specific module let's say the standard Python here is Python 2.7 but if I want to use more recent Python, I can load the Python env module. Module list in this case shows now for me that, okay, there's also the Python loaded. And if I execute the Python interpreter, uh, one sees that it's now Python 3.7. Uh, for running applications, the optimal runtime parameters, how many CPU cores to use, what kind of parallelization scheme and so on. Um, they are most likely, you have to look a bit, bit differently how to, how to use them in title. Uh, in the documentation, you might find some guidelines, but then on the other hand, it might be that you need to do a bit of testing on your own. Uh, the batch up system, Auslurm, uh, that's uh, in principle quite similar as previously. There are some new new queues and, and policies, uh, and it's really recommended to write the uh, new batch up scripts uh, starting from scratch. And once again, if you go to docs, under computing, uh, for the modules, by the way, you can you can find some uh, information here how to use that. Uh, for the running jobs, here we'll find information on using a batch of system in general and how to actually do that in in Puhti with some examples. Uh, worth mentioning a few different uh, changes. Uh, as said earlier, even though there is the default building project uh, in my.csc.fi, that doesn't actually affect uh, anything in Puhti. In Puhti, you have always to specify with the dash dash account the project you want the billing to be done. Uh, when specifying, when doing parallel calculations, there are two possible ways uh, to define the number of uh, parallel tasks, it's either with uh, dash dash and tasks. Uh, if you just specify this number, the Slurm just tries to find uh, 120 CPU cores for you, not necessarily all from the same node and might be scattered all around the system. That's probably not a big issue if the communication 
in your parallel application is, is not critical and it can shorten the queuing time because the batch system has easier time for finding empty slots for you. However, uh, if your application is uh, more communication critical, it might be better uh, to request full nodes. So you can use the dash dash nodes equal three and then n tasks per node 40 to get again 120 tasks in, in total, but so that they are all in full nodes. It's also recommended that one specifies the amount of memory you really need because it a course or also memory can route in a node and that will help the your uh, jobs in your, uh, your jobs in the queue uh, to go through faster. In docs and also see what are the available batch partitions. So in CPU part, we have uh, for testing purposes, partition where you can run for 15 minutes with a maximum of two nodes. And uh, for one node or smaller jobs, we have the small partition. And then for a large parallel calculation, we have the large partition where the maximum amount of parallel tasks is 4,000. There is also a possibility uh, some software don't support pre-starting and really require uh, longer runs. So we have a long run queue for these kind of jobs. Uh, however, only with limited number of uh, nodes preset for that, where one can run for 14 days. And if you really need this uh, memory uh, more than 382 gigabytes, you need to use a huge mem where you can run for three days or huge mem long run where you can run for seven days. Uh, for GPU part, there is also a test partition, we can run for 15 minutes and then for during jobs there is just a GPU. For uh, submitting batch jobs, you can see templates and examples here and uh, best idea when you start is just to copy paste this. There is actually a shortcut here so by clicking here you can see that, okay, that was now copied to clipboard. So if I go back to Puhti, create here a job script, I can just uh, paste now the information here. So I can give uh, some name for my job. Uh, the account here is something that I said, that's something you need to specify. And when you start, it might be that you don't remember that, okay, what is your project number? So once again, I can take this CSC workspaces here. And even though I'm actually now in the scratch directory for this project here, I can still run simulations uh, so that they are built from another project just by specifying the corresponding project ID here. So copy paste that here. Uh, this is just small test, so I don't need two hours of time. I can just request five minutes and uh, this would request uh, two gigabytes of memory per CPU core. I can put that there. And for partition, as this is a very small test, I just use the test. I won't be using any modules and I just uh, I use this SRAN launcher, which is recommended here. And I just execute the single simple Unix command SRAN, uh, Unix command host name here. If I save the file, I can use the S patch to submit that. This queue and giving my user ID. I can see that, okay, 
that's uh, in the queue now. CG means that it was in the sort of completion stage. And we can see that there is a default output here, which I can look. And we see that, okay, there was the host name was, uh, uh, was executed here and the output was, was given here. Uh, there is variety of different example batch of scripts that you can, you can find from our documentation. Uh, once you have a parent simulation, actually, and if you want to know that how much memory in fact was used, one can use this sf command, and I can give here the job ID that is automatically generated by, by Slurm there, and you can see, for example, this uh, output file, and we can see that, okay, this is the job ID, uh, who was the user, did it exit cleanly, how much CPU time it used, what was sort of efficiency, uh, how much memory it needed and how much memory it uh, used from the requested two gigabytes and how many billing units it, it consumed. And of course, as this was very simple test case, none of this really makes sense, but when you're doing simulations, it's a uh, good idea to check, especially for the memory, how much memory your uh, simulation utilizes, and then request a sort of proper amount of memory. Uh, one thing to speed, uh, pay a bit more at attention is uh, about the uh, billing units. So once you have received your CSC project, you normally need to uh, apply for resources for that project. And uh, then of course, when you uh, either store data or run uh, simulations in our supercomputers, the billing units are consumed. In Pufti, uh, one CPU core for one hour consumes uh, one billing unit, whereas one GPU for one hour consumes 60 billion units. Uh, and this really reflects the price between these two units as how much electricity uh, they consume. Uh, core hours, both for CPUs and GPUs, they are built based on uh, how much time you actually used. So even though you would request in your batch up uh, two days, time but in effect in reality you run only for one day you will be charged for the one day memory on the other hand that's based on the amount you you request so that uh, requesting one gigabyte for one hour consumes 1.1 uh, billing unit uh, if you also use the uh, fast local disks they consume also some billing units and if you use more disk quota than the default one, they also consume some billing units. Uh, it might be a bit confusing uh, to how this all ends up, but there is uh, in our research pages, there is this uh, calculator uh, one can use. So if you go research.csc.fi I think if you go to high performance computing sorry accounts and support yeah there is billing and monitoring uh, you can see that there is a big unit calculator I can choose Pufti here say that I want to use 100 CPU cores no GPUs, how much memory in total I need. So if all of these require two gigabytes, uh, I would have it, uh, 200 gigabytes in total. If I was using also the uh, fast local disk there, and let's say I would be running for one day, 
can see that the billing unit needed for that would be about uh, uh, 3,000 billing units. You will actually also see some, some price here. Of course, for academic customers, you don't really need to pay any money for that. So Ministry of Education is, is paying for this. Uh, for commercial customers, you need to also pay some money. But even though you don't necessarily need to pay anything for this, it's good to remember that the billing units, they are, they are not really free and there is also some monetary cost for them when you are using them. One thing to probably pay attention also, if you have a software that can in principle utilize both GPUs or CPUs, is that how efficiently it works on GPUs, whether it makes sense to use them based on the big difference in the, in the cost here. Uh, when you log in, you will be working in the, in the logging node. And login notes would be also for used only for uh, moving around in file systems, submitting jobs, uh, editing input files, and so on, but not for any long lasting or memory intensive pre post processing stuff. So, few minutes, few gigabytes, that's okay. But if you need to do uh, longer things, uh, you should either run as a batch job, if you need to do in interactive, uh, also interactive jobs can be run in compute nodes via the, via the batch system. Uh, if you are needing to use uh, application that uses graphical user interface, it might be uh, good to use the no machine. Uh, once again, if we go to uh, docs, we can find here running jobs, interactive usage. Uh, you will find also some instructions here how to get no machine configured and installed in your system. But uh, uh, let's say that I, I just need to do some post processing on command line. So I can once again take the copy paste from here. Uh, because you need to be waiting. Okay, uh, actually. Uh, I can say that, okay, I just need one single CPU core for 10 minutes, bit of memory. This PT here, that's, that's needed for the interactive usage. And also here, we need to provide the project that is built here. So I can put my project here, uh, partition, I'll be using just a test partition here. And if you request for a longer time or more memory, it might be that you don't get access to immediately, that will go through the batch of tubes. And so you might want to get the email notifications when this starts. Uh, in this particular case, this should, should go through very quickly. So I'm just, with this run here, I'm starting a bash shell. You can see that, okay, it will be queued. And now also in the prompt, prompt you can see that uh, I'm no longer in locking node, I'm in a compute node, and I could do my pre-post processing, which might require a bit more resources from here. And when I'm done, I can just exit and my interactive session is, is ended. Uh, as mentioned, we have the 440 CPU nodes and all the GPU nodes, which have uh, this uh, fast local SSD-like disk. In order to utilize that, you put the uh, additional request to your patch up script. So with this uh, minus uh, dash dash GRS NVMe and the amount of memory. Uh, you want from them. So this would preserve uh, uh, two terabytes of memory. And this can be useful in some applications that uh, really need to write lots of things to disk during the 
simulation such as Turpomol or Orca. And once again from docs, you can find more information how to use these disks. Uh, if you need to build applications yourself or you are developing your own application compared to Taito, the software stack is a bit different. Uh, we have GNU and Intel compilers. Uh, Intel compiler, if you remember from my default module list, is the, is the default there. And then there are um, various high performance libraries for linear algebra, fast Fourier transforms, and so on. Uh, we have two MPI libraries. The default one is the HPCX, which is based on Open MPI, and then there is an also alternative MP library. Uh, Intel MPI library is also in principle available there. If you're moving from Taito to Pufti, uh, any applications that uh, you have built yourself in Taito should be rebuilt. Uh, in Pufti, you might need to modify a bit some of configure scripts, uh, make files, uh, etc. Uh, for recommended compiler flags, uh, you can look in, in docs. Go here, uh, compiling. There are the available compilers and some recommended flags depending on bit of your application that which which gives the best performance and at the same time stable enough behavior. You will find information also on how to build GPU applications from here. Uh, it's recommended that uh, any application you build yourself, you install them in this uh, variable disk area, uh, which makes also easier to share them for all the other members of the project. Uh, if you need any help, uh, in uh, installing or getting your own applications to run in Puhti, please contact our service desk. Also, if you think that your program is not performing good enough in Puhti, uh, we can also offer some help in, in profiling and maybe optimizing and parallelizing also the applications. So also in these kind of circumstances, please please contact the service desk. Okay, that's uh, pretty much uh, what we had to present for you now. Uh, so CSC customer portal, my.csc.fi is where you can uh, manage your user information, apply for access to Pufti, apply for resources, uh, about user documentation. You will find information in this docs.csc.fi and for news related to the other changes in our supercomputing system and infrastructure. So we are having the Mahti supercomputer. Uh, installation is uh, currently in, in progress and that's supposed to be available for, for all users uh, in late April this year. Uh, we have this uh, DL2021 utilization web page where you can find more details about the project. And if you have any questions about uh, using Puhti now or CSC services in general, uh, I'm, I'm happy to answer here uh, via the chat. Okay, if no questions, I, I thank for your participation. Uh, as said, we'll make the recording of this available uh, in CSC's YouTube channel uh, within a week. Okay, goodbye and uh, I wish you can move on to fully utilize Puhti in the near future. Bye.